They purposely had to buy lots of different colors so that they didn't have to change all the drinks you've seen here yet. Of all the people who would do it, you're one of the ones I would choose. I would pick. <laughs> microphone because this is a workshop and having the microphone helps us not have a workshop. except for fun, um, whereas Chris here, Paul, Chris, is our, um, I'm, you can introduce yourself. I'm James Forrester, I'm product manager for Digital Editor, working for the foundation. I also moonlight as a product manager for a bunch of other things, most notably admin tools currently, um, in the absence of anyone else to do that job. I am um, a quite long-term admin tool user, I guess. I got Sysop tools in 2003, and check using oversight tools as we develop them and been around a bit. And um, uh, I'm basically here to help out a little, but other people do the actual hard work of writing code. So I will hand the mic over to Chris. All right, um, I'm Chris Stipe, a uh, security engineer with the foundation. Um, my day job is doing security for MediaWiki platform, um, and I moonlight as an admin tools developer also in all my free time um, when James tells me to do stuff. Um, so uh, so I've been working on some of the admin tool stuff for the last about nine months or so. Um, and a lot of that is also just coordinating with some of our wonderful volunteers, Booman, uh, Grenier, he, he's not here, but, um, and uh, uh, who's it? Uh, we have a few other developers around who do, do admin tool stuff. So, um, 
I'm, I just try and coordinate and make sure that I merge their stuff. Peter, um, who uh, was a former uh, foundation employee, um, he left for more public waters and uh, better, better, better pay. And uh, <laughs> but he's here in spirit. Uh, we, we still like him. And uh, he, uh, he's been working on the, uh, the global the soil finalization stuff, which we'll talk about later. So um, he's, he's still kind of doing some, some stuff with us in the background. So, uh, Speaking of soil finalization, uh, so our roadmap. Um, so for those who are reasonably familiar with admin tools, um, you've probably gotten a response on a bug from me saying, hey, put it on the admin tools roadmap and linked here. Um, so uh, we, we have kind of a, a rough roadmap for the project, um, I should say admin tools as a project. Um, so basically about a year ago, yeah, let's say a year ago, uh, uh, several of the stewards uh, at admin level users uh, had, had many issues they were working through, uh, especially just bugs in the tools they were using uh, and needed improvements to their tools. Uh, we had no one assigned officially, so um, the foundation, uh, we, we begged and pleaded and we found some people to, to work on them. <laughs> and uh, so we, we started working on the, uh, the, these tools and just uh, trying to help out uh, with the, the global administration uh, tools out there. So admin tools as a project uh, is, is a project. We have a wiki page. Um, and so we have a roadmap where we try and keep all of our prioritized or, or keep a roughly prioritized list of just what are the things that are going to be most helpful to help uh, our, our, uh, our admin level users accomplish their jobs. Uh, whatever that may be. Finding spam, doing stuff. And so we call it admin tools like there is a kind of coherent narrative around admin tools. They're all part of one thing. And as demonstrated just in the previous talk, but especially if you use them, they're designed by totally different people at different times for different users and in different ways. And for a lot of them, designed is a really kind word that doesn't really apply. So um, it's a real mess. And a bunch of them, uh, a lot of the work on admin tools is actually just um, making sure they don't break or when they do break, unbreaking them a little bit um, so much, and, and less on the kind of big, let's build a new admin tools or whatever, although there is that as well. And um, there's, there's kind of a bunch of work to talk about whether we want to replace a, a few of our admin tools with a more powerful version of an existing admin tool rather than keep on having people have to learn 25 different tools, they learn three maybe, things like that. So for example, uh, the spam blacklist doesn't do anything that the abuse filter can't do, except it's a slightly easier thing to edit. So we could make an abuse filter that's easier to edit instead, and then get rid of an extension, make it easier for people to use. And similarly with the um, spam blacklist, with the title blacklist, and lots of different things which are uh, archaic, you know, date from 2005, 2004, 2006, where um, it's not how we generally write admin tools in other ways, they're not logged in the same way, and it's much harder to track down their usage. And um, so there's a big kind of chunk of work um, that's not in this list, which is just, hey, let's make admin tools as they currently are better. But then there's this list, which I'm going to hand back over to Chris for. Yay. So um, uh, here are just a couple of the tools that are uh, the top of our priority list right now. Um, trying to do some work on the, the biggest ed impact projects. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, several of them, well, I guess we're now down to just rolling out global abuse filters. Um, so a, a lot of our stuff, uh, we are centralizing some tools into abuse filters. So we're um, uh, abuse filter, you get, you, you will hear a lot about abuse filter uh, if, you're, if you're around admin tools. Um, so uh, global abuse filters. So um, as Mars was talking about uh, in our last presentation, which a few people joined since then. So uh, I'll repeat. Uh, basically uh, uh, allowing uh, centralized admins, so admins on, not admins, but uh, uh, steward level uh, administrators on Meta to in one place to find uh, abuse filter rules to apply across uh, all our wikis uh, with um, local wikis can opt out of, well, oh, before we roll this out globally, we'll uh, let uh, local wikis opt out of particular rules if, if there is a particular need. Uh, 
but essentially uh, uh, those rules would apply across all wikis, uh, especially useful for fighting vandalism and, and cross wiki spam um, quickly. Uh, we mentioned global rename last talk as well. Um, that is on my to-do list. <laughs> uh, renaming, so how many people are familiar with central auth and kind of the global versus local names? Um, all right, so uh, at the, the foundation, we're using uh, central auth as a system to manage your identity across wikis. Uh, so this was rolled out in 2008, seven, eight, seven, eight nine, somewhere around there, um, uh, where uh, we, you know, we've worked, uh, where you have accounts across multiple wikis, uh, we want one, ide uh, one identity for you, um, so that's a global identity uh, managed uh, through central law. Uh, so renaming users is actually really hard because we have like 900 databases to rename you in and change thousands of edits per wiki. So it's a, it's a, a, a fairly complex process which is really difficult right now manually, and so we're trying to uh, improve that and uh, make it uh, fairly robust for, uh, for the next several years until we, we get something different in central law. Um, so that's, that's kind of our next thing. Um, uh, we have a couple other things. Um, actually, I should reorganize this. School finalization, which was also mentioned. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, we have users who have you know their uh, uh, actually, I'll use Domas. Um, he's one of our longtime users. Uh, he is a local user on several wikis. Um, he's, a, he's a power user on several several wikis. Uh, been a long time volunteer, uh, but he is not a global user because uh, someone else on Japanese wiki, I think, or Polish wiki, also had his name. Uh, also had a, a Domas registered, and uh, that user registered their global account. So we have users with the same name on different wikis. Um, and that provides all sorts of headaches, uh, especially as we're doing more and more global things like global abuse, uh, global abuse filters, uh, global renaming, uh, trying to identify which user you're talking about when you just say uh, you know, C site. Which C site are you talking about? Are you talking about the one on English Wikipedia? Are you talking about you know, who are you talking about? So uh, uh, renaming users and uh, coming up with one name for every single user is uh, the, the school finalization. Um, so that's a lot of work that Peter's doing. Uh, timing on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so there are kind of two restrictions on timing. One of them is that we need to uh, tell people, hey, we're about to rename your account. Um, so we need to give people, uh, send out an email to people who have an email address or might have had an email address sort of set but not confirmed, of which there are about four million. Uh, yes, I love our users. Um, uh, so a lot of users who have an email that we can't actually send emails to, um, so we can't alert them to the fact that they're about to lose their account, saying, hey, you need to do this or your account will get renamed. Um, and then give people probably a few weeks of notice before actually doing it. But that gives us the time to actually write the and actually be able to do it script to globally rename users. Sorry, yeah. So I'm in Europe right on comments, and mm -hmm. one of my tasks is to rename users, which I haven't done uh, in quite a while, uh, because this global rename is coming up, and yeah. I think, should I still bother doing that? Should I, or...? Yes, that was a good question. Um, so, uh, we had originally hoped to get um, global renaming, so the SUL finalization done and over um, uh, before the start of June. And the reason for that was because we've been talking about finishing it since 2008 and it was getting ridiculous. But also, um, we wanted to get it done before the rollout of several things, most notably the foundation-wide elections, but also um, flow to new wikis and the ability to do cross-wiki notifications in flow, and a few other things. There are a bunch of um, really interesting developments and useful developments that are blocked on SOL finalization. However, Things are as they are, and we found that we were about to completely break the election if we were to go ahead on our original timescale, so we just killed it and said, we're going to come back to it later, sorry. Um, we don't know exactly when that later is, as I drowned out by noise outside. Um, and uh, the reason we don't know exactly when that is is because um, uh, the more time you spend on a problem, the more you find there are complexities to that problem. And, um, 
and especially with a system like Central Auth, which has kind of developed over quite a lot of time, um, it has some issues um, that we need to work around. Um, and so hopefully we will be able to finish um, SUL finalization in the next month or two, um, and then at that point there will be no local accounts anymore except for a technical reason. There won't, users won't have a different kind of, different named account on different wikis, they'll have one account globally. At which point there won't be the concept of locally renaming an account except if you're a steward and you're trying to unbreak something that's gone horribly wrong in 0.1% of cases. The most cases users will get globally renamed by a single global tool um, uh, available to stewards and whoever else the community wants to give it to um, in on meta uh, security issues. Um, but in the meantime, um, yes, it probably makes sense to let users rename themselves on individual local wikis like Commons, especially on Commons, of course, because there's lots of traffic. Um, but uh, users should be aware that if they rename themselves on one wiki but not on the others, um, then they're likely to end up with um, a really messy system where they actually have multiple global accounts so after for, for the merging. Like, homogenization of the usernames uh, yeah. is definitely useful. Yeah, no, that's very much useful. Uh, as long as they already have a global user account of that name. If, if, they're, if, if I'm called Bob and, um, and I, on Commons, and I've got another account called um, you know, Arthur on another account, and I want that renamed to Bob, but Chris owns the global account Bob, then renaming new accounts to be called Bob will just get us back, renamed back away when the globalization happens. So um, uh, if someone is called Bob globally, they're going to stay being called Bob globally unless they are globally renamed. Uh, the single user finalization process is not going to forcibly rename anybody who's got a global account now. So if someone has a global account and says, please rename this account to be the same as my global account, excellent, fantastic, go for it now. That cleans up things and means we don't have to fix them later. Um, if they want to move away from that or want to start clashing with someone else, uh, please don't do that because um, they're not going to be very happy when you get them renamed and then a week later they get unrenamed or de-renamed. Uh, related to that, would it, be, would, it, would it be possible to merge global accounts? Because as you, as we all know, people tend to rename themselves and then create two global accounts and it's a mess, but it's a soluble mess, you know, you, you can solve it by merging those accounts. But, Hey, we, we, we've been wait, waiting for a local account merge tool since like forever, and it's never happened. And it, I, I imagine it shouldn't be that hard. We ironically used it for Wiki Voyage. Yeah. Comment. We we uh, we are as part of the Wiki Voyage migration. Uh, we we did actually give them the, the merge because we had um, we had forcibly renamed them. Um, and so we had lots of accounts that, that had, you know, we had renamed most of it, but then they came on, they created a new one, and so they had clashing names. And so, uh, yes, in that situation, uh, merge. And it, it actually, it, the, the tool, as far as I know, has been working reasonably well. Um, you know, we, we did do a security review on it. Um, the, so um, I, I think at a, uh, the, the next steps on that would be at a, a policy perspective, um, you know, making sure that the, the wikis are okay with that. Um, and then, uh, you know, the sole finalization is, is obviously uh, an area where people are going to want to merge uh, global accounts. Um, so there's no tool currently to merge a global account. That'll be something that we have to do. That's that's probably at least on the same scale as the rename, the global rename. So it's a, it's a fairly complex process to to get that all done correctly. But it's yeah, I mean, it, it is reasonably straightforward as well. Um, uh, and it should be on the road. Um, so the reason why we're not going to delete the rename user extension completely from the cluster for local renames is because if you have two global accounts um, with um, local accounts on different wikis that you want to be under one of them. So if you have, you know, foo and bar and you've got local accounts on commons under bar but you want to be your primary under foo and you don't have a clash under foo you can locally rename just that account across to the new global account, detach, reattach, and it's a mess, but it is possible to move individual local accounts. 
and then you could merge that way. But you wouldn't be able to merge two local accounts on Commons as part of a single global merge right now. So we'd need that tool and also a steward who is very patient, who wants to do that for up to 900 wikis. Hi. Um, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Uh, you see, I, it's about global renaming, actually. I was writing my account, and uh, I'm going to rename it. Most, most of them, I, I think it's 28 January, right? Something like that. So when I was watching, I was seeing some of contributions by myself in some wiki. When I got in that wiki, it disappeared. Just I don't have any contribution. For me and uh, uh, for a few admin actually, for a few admin in my in where I work, uh, and I'm admin in S Wikipedia, Spanish Wikipedia. So I found that the first thing I didn't know why is that. So when I was watching around all accounts, uh, actually I'm with a friend uh, working with security, security banks, something like that. We were watching my account and I have a uh, Two open sources, something like that, in my account. That's that happened when when the, when it came renamed. So is is what really really easy for somebody who knows how to to take out my account. So it's found not in once, but in so many accounts when they global rename. So that's what that's I'm afraid. So because it can be really hacked. And I don't want my account to be hacked. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Quite a lot. More often than that, it could be. So De what, what, what happened that? What I can do? Yeah, and that, that is part of the complexity of the global rename. So that's why the global rename tool is not currently, uh, the, the development on it is still ongoing, um, because we're trying to prevent just those issues. Right now, the process to global, globally rename something, or, or any of the renames, um, you know, you go, you unattach, Every single user, then you rename each, you know, all 900 of those users. Um, the rename tool currently can leave behind. It's, it should only happen in the case of a database error, but those do happen. So um, yes, I have seen definitely some users where their edits, um, you know, the, the rename job happens, but it doesn't. Um, you know, there's a database error, so the the edits. You know, basically, the query times out. So we actually built in the global rename tool. Uh, we're actually tracking, you know. Here's how many edits the user has. Here, how many I actually got you know, uh, moved across, and so we can actually track to make sure that that doesn't happen in, in the future, um, because it, it certainly is an issue. Um, uh, we are also being very careful about you know there's obviously race conditions of when you start renaming a user if someone so, registers and all that stuff. So, so that that was something I, I really I really can understand. I know some sometimes happens, but actually it's happened really, really some strange things. For example, uh, I was watching accounts on a wiki about, uh, about admins, and we found some admins got into a page. They, that page, they put a code, and don't know what to do, don't know what they do, and in another page with the same account, for a code, and disappeared. That happened, I don't know how what happened, but I find out, I really don't know what to do because that's weird to find something like that. I think it's a script for one people know, but the problem is not that. The problem is that having in uh, like 48 counts of admin in Spanish Wikipedia. So what can I do? That I don't see that happen a lot, quite often. So that, and that, uh, which we can probably talk more about that specific issue because that, that does sound very unusual and probably a case where you probably do want to get some stewards involved and you know, some people, because that, that definitely does, that does, that sounds very worrying and I, I had not <laughs> heard anything about this yet. So um, definitely that is something that, um, uh, those types of issues would, would be ones to definitely bring that to the attention of, of a steward um, or um, at least open a bugzilla ticket if nothing else and start documenting and saying this looks strange and, and just make sure that you, you get some eyes on it, and, and we'll make sure that, that I, I discovered that because of oh, global well, reading. I discovered so often. So All right. That, 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 I was happy. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should. So yeah. Um, what about global check user? Global check user. Uh, the last one. Dang it. Um, <laughs> it's check user, but it's global. Oh really? <laughs> uh, that one. Um, so yeah, we are. That's on our radar. Um, it's it's really on hold until 
well, we're actually trying to hire a product manager um, to to really come in and uh, really balance the community needs versus our privacy policy versus what's technically possible to do. That turned out to be really hard in this case. Um, and uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out exactly what should the product look like, how is it going to exactly work, um, and how is it going to be you know, compliant with all of our, our policies across wikis and all that stuff, which is a big, messy thing. But, yeah. Before workshop, I, I still have one more question, sorry. Sure. Um, so the, the presentation is admin tools, but all of those are global admin tools. So I'm, I'm not really... I'm not really nitpicking, that, that's fine, but I have a pitch uh, for an admin tool which is not local, which is not global, it's, it's local. Uh, because for, on my wiki, they, we use a lot of patrolling, and uh, it's sometimes cumbersome to patrol all edits of a user or of a user on a page. So, would it be possible to create a, a tool or uh, an extension or, or something that patrols a lot of edits at the same time? So, so just like reverting to <laughs> the, the um, behind you who yes. really like to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like uh, rewrote big parts of the patrolling system earlier this year, so I'm probably the one to talk about. Yeah. Um, well, I thought about that and I did some initial hacking on it, but well, some big problems appeared, especially if you like have pages with several hundred thousand revisions, which are very rare, but we have them. You can place limits, right? You can place limits, but those have to be consistent, and the users have to know these limits, and if they don't know, they are like, my god, it doesn't work, it's broken somehow, and yet yeah, it's, of course, we can do messages, <laughs> and, but of course, it only needs to be, have a consistent user interaction, and right. yeah, it's, Possible, but it's not really as easy as it might sound in the first place. Right. Um, but yes, yeah, so admin tools is very broad and covers everything from like rollbacker, uh, rollback permissions, all the way up to, um, well, I guess theoretically covers special SQL. Although no one in this room has access to that, not even him <laughs> anymore on production. Um, but there are, yeah. It's still on no, 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 no. We, oh, it's, okay. it's, it, the the, the um, we switched off the cluster. But it's it's still a video with you. So you know you just the, the decision to switch it back on would be an admin tools decision. Also the answer is no. Um, so we've got to the end of the slide. Um, eventually. Can I just answer yeah. a little bit on that? Uh, so yes, lots of global things. Um, like I said at the early on, uh, we are looking for kind of the highest impact things. Um, and uh, so far those have all been global things, which for obvious reasons, um, so, but obviously, yes, um, if there are local tools that are applicable across a lot of wikis, if not, I mean, you know, not all wikis, but, uh, but a lot of wikis, uh, absolutely, um, I think those are definitely fair game, and um, we would be interested in understanding those. Yeah, I mean, there's, so there's gadgets like RTLC that are deployed on lots of wikis, you know, if, if we really think this is a good gadget, should we actually make it a, an extension that's deployed everywhere and available to everyone, you know, rather than have some some kind of hack that people have to know to go to this page and use this gadget, things like that. And um, yeah, that's the answer, yes. Anyway, so we lied and said this was a workshop and we started talking um, 25 minutes ago. Oops. Uh, sorry about that. So um, let's actually turn it into a workshop. Um, so what have we not got in our roadmap that we should have in our roadmap? What shouldn't be in our roadmap that we do have in our roadmap? Please, please take things out of our roadmap. Um, uh, yeah, what prioritization should we do? So for example, right now, the highest priority thing we have are global re rename, um, global use filter, and SEO finalization, and then global check user, partially because it's a big piece of work, but also because um, we don't think it's as, as important as uh, global abuse filter comes further down that list. Is that the right set of priorities? Are there things that we're completely missing? Are there things that you just want to have a talk about and you don't know whether they're better or worse? Um, talk. Anyone? Um, or, or I can just stand here and look silly. James. Um, I, I notice in the ordering of things, which obviously can change depending on what's ordered, the global rename is relatively low for some, the unification. Yeah, necessary. Um, yeah, well, well, I'm just interested in why that's 
why that's necessary, I would think that obviously the rename would be much easier when they go back to the local account. Uh, yes, it would be. Um, so the issue we have there is uh, as people are hopefully reading our lovely emails about like, you know, you are Bob over here on these 10 wikis and Charles, Charles over on these other 10 wikis, uh, please, you know, make an attempt to clean up uh, before we have to go through and do that work. Um, so there's that side of it, and then uh, the other side is once they get forcibly renamed, so they're suddenly, you know, they have multiple accounts, or they've got they've been renamed. So you know, you clash, you know, Domas uh, clashes with a global account. So uh, our lovely volunteer Domas is going to be renamed to something horrible, uh, some name that we generate. Uh, and so he is probably very, very soon after that going to want to be renamed. Uh, we're anticipating that that is going to be something he wants to do very, very soon. Uh, so in anticipation of that, we wanted to make sure that... No, no, no it makes sense to have yeah. it done with the plan to be operational. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would, it would have to be. And of course, the logic to actually lock 900 wikis on two separate rows and make sure that we do a single transaction and then kick off the job queues and then de-lock um, 1,800 rows needs to be written before we can do global rename because that is global SEO finalization as well as global rename. And so we'd have to write that code anyway um, uh, before we can do it. Uh, it's simple, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers that question. Uh, anything else? Is it just really hot and people just want to sit in a nice cool room in the quiet with the Wi-Fi? Okay, that's understandable too. So I can just stand here and beatbox for 20 minutes. You know? yeah. I, I, no, no, I can't. Um, and so, yeah. In here, what you're talking about, what you've talked about so far, you're sitting in Voyage, Wiki Voyage, in recent changes, and seeing this astonishing array of usernames showing up on a watch list of, of, of recent changes. My assumption is that that is a good function of what you've been talking about, that if a person from English yeah. Wikipedia even just opens just once in that wiki, that it's showing up, registering, make sure, making sure there's no problems of what might have happened before. Is that is that happening in most other wikis as well? Yes. Um, the slew of um, auto-created accounts is, is quite significant. Because when I first started on, having spent all my life on EN more or less, and a lot less in other places, and suddenly looking at recent changes in Voyage, I actually attempted to speak with some of the older timers who have been around the wiki travel, and they weren't even 100% sure. It's almost as though there hadn't been sufficient notification at that wiki that this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because, you know, initially, just the sight of some of them, they looked as though they could have been spam created or bot created or... Yeah, um, we do have a problem with people um, creating a bot account on a low patrols wiki and then auto um, creating across to a higher patrols wiki, but because it's an auto patrol, uh, sorry, it's an auto created account, um, they, it gets less attention because, oh, they're, a wiki, they're an account from another wiki and then they use that to do spam bot attacks. So that's a pattern of abuse that's been used. You will see a lot more of those on something like Wikivoyage than Wikipedia, simply because English Wikipedia, et cetera, has, has gotten most of those, most of the old users have already merged there somehow. And so the, the automatic creation happens the first time you go visit, usually, while logged in. Yeah, it's quite spectacular yeah. on, on the, near the founding of the, where it was starting up, because yeah. there's just this huge number of them. Yeah, every time one that breaks the banner, they just Yeah, yeah. That, thanks to the way that, um, you know, Wikipedia, uh, sorry, well, Wikipedia right. dominates Google and English dominates the internet, it's really hard to not have accidentally created an English Wikipedia or to create an account if you've ever logged into any other Wikimedia wiki. Um, because you'll just accidentally misclick once and you've got the account. And so, so for somebody who's not really tech savvy at all, sure. technically speaking, if you have somebody who innocently is just checking out Wiki for the first time and wanders into a whole range of sister projects, yep. is what I saw in Voyage what happens as well? Exactly, yeah. So it, it creates the standardisation. Yeah. So, so if the person is starting from an IP, 
If they start from IP, nothing will happen. But if they're logged in on any one wiki, any one Wikipedia wiki, so say they logged into French Wikiquote, uh, created a new account on French Wikiquote and logged in, um, and then they visited um, Spanish Wiktionary, and they suddenly have a Spanish Wiktionary account, and then they visit English um, Wiki Voyage, and they get an English Wiki Voyage account, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and because at, so you see, being a, a, a Commons admin, and when mm -hmm. I do some renaming, I'm actually amazed at the amount of extra projects that I suddenly belong to. <laughs> yeah. Um, in my ECRL, I just can't believe the list. I true. Think, oh, could I do that? So um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the numbers off the top of my head. We have something like 33 million global accounts, wow. is that right? Of which oh, yeah. there are about 58 million local accounts. So, so a lot of them actually wouldn't ever, ever be really used, but it's just a way of preserving and protecting the system. Um, to so some extent, there are a lot of people who, who have an account that's created and is ne never used again. Excuse me, interrupting like this. But, yeah, that's fine. But, but I, I mean, technically speaking, the system can cope with just having that vast amount like that. It doesn't really cause any big glitches. Yes, so we've never deleted user accounts ever. Um, uh, except accidentally when the database crashed. Um, <laughs> that was a very bad time. We lost the database in three days. Very bad. Um, uh, so there are a lot of accounts that haven't been logged into for three years or five years or ten years, and we don't actually know how long they've not been logged into. And it's entirely possible that we could delete that account and reuse it. But we, that's, I guess, an admin tool kind of thing. But it's a really big community discussion. And some people use an account to log in and set um, and just read because they use a watch list to keep track of things they like to read. And just because they haven't edited doesn't mean they don't use the account. So um, activity on accounts is actually uh, a bit of a mystery and we're looking into that. We have a bit of a, um, a soft master in Sydney in Australia who I don't, it's no big deal to what necessarily mention his name or his practices. But in his time, he's created such an astonishing array of usernames. I'm wondering if you have, if you've got a situation in the SUL, SUL world where it's been an identified blocked serial offender who's created all these usernames. Yeah. Are those usernames basically blocked forever? Yeah. Copyright issue, isn't it? Yeah. So. Not if they haven't been there. If, if they've made no edits, the edits, then it's not so much an issue. Um, to be very clear, um, there, it is a trade secret between Chris and me what algorithm we're going to use to pick the SEO finalization thing because we explicitly do not want people to game the system. And um, however, that said, if you are blocked, you're not going to get a global account over the top of someone else who is, isn't blocked. And so what's likely to happen is that those accounts will get renamed away. So that means, you know who I'm talking about when I talk about David York? No, you don't. No. You haven't been around long enough, obviously. <laughs> but anybody who's been around long enough and actually seen the, um, the, the, the creator in mm -hmm. Sydney and Australia, he, he's, he, I, I'm sure there are a few others that sure. exist. It's just a huge amount of usernames that's created. Yeah. It effectively is locking up those names of somebody else. Yeah, them. so so those names are not locked forever because with the global rename tool it would be possible to rename those away and so you know if I if some soft puppeter has created an account called Bob Smith and I really want to be called Bob Smith then that Bob Smith account could be renamed to Bob Smith usurped and then I can be Bob Smith now um, but yes uh, it is a bit messy to just leave all those unused and unusable accounts lying around because you see the oh, just one last point sorry mm -hmm. because you see in some cases I came with a Four or five years ago, people talking about the importance of creating doppelgangers if they were worried that there's something going to be put here, there is yeah. something first. Yeah. Well, will that fail things up at all? Yeah, I mean, the, the anti so we have a, a tool to prevent things like, I don't know if you mean like doppelgangers and like uh, using a Russian character instead of an English one, so it's visually identical, even though it's technically not. Or, or something may be very similar. So if, uh, if I have the name of Saptu, well, maybe someone's put SSATU, and I don't want anybody to use the SSATU, so I create that. Right, yes. Um, so the ones that you create will, yes, those will also be globalized. Uh, the ones that other people create, I mean, so the we have an anti-spoof extension, which which tries to prevent a lot of those, uh, especially on the, you know, especially Russian characters and stuff like that, uh, that, that prevents creating accounts that have identically, visually identically accounts in, in other languages. Uh, so that's already, that's been in place for years. 
So uh, should, that shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, in lieu of the previous discussion, um, deletion, user deletion. I, I know that it hasn't been done yet because uh, the user is referenced around the database um, a lot. But you know, uh, user without edits and without any actions could probably be deleted safely. Um, so have you considered actually making a, 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 that a possibility? So the mobile engineering team created um, a tool to reuse the concept of watch lists mm -hmm. as a kind of reading list for users. Okay. Um, uh, and um, they've got actually slightly different language mm -hmm. between anonymous and logged in users and how they use it. But um, they found that quite a lot of users not only never log in on desktop, they only log in on mobile, but they, they never edit, never edit. And but they use the watch list all the time to keep track of articles that they want to read. Right. That, that means that they have some activity, but they are certainly- So they don't have any publicly logged activity. Yeah, but so so I can tell by looking in the database and happening to know where to look. But um, it's, there's no real indication that the user account is active, and um, I'm not sure we'd want to get into a state where um, we publish that this user last logged in last week or something like that. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and if we are going to do that, that's a that's a discussion we need to have, yeah, you know, the, properly with the privacy policy. Of course, but there is a use case. For example, there are a lot, and I mean a really lot. Of blocked users, yeah, I, obvious vandals and the, username. There, there is memorably the user JD Forrester is an asshole and things like that um, that fill up English Wikipedia. Exactly. Um, I, I am happy for those accounts to stay where they are. I am happy for them to be deleted. I don't care, but I know some users do, and so they get excited or suppressed. Yeah, but usually they are, you know, renamed to something or renamed less something harmful, less but, harmful. But yeah. But they, they still are there, and there is no need for them to be there. True. Of course, they don't bother anyone, probably, but yeah. you know, it would be cleaner, I mm -hmm. suppose, if they were blocked. Or, sure. Or um, was yeah, so, yes, it would be. Um, and we probably should actually think about doing this, uh, getting rid of... But it's not something in, in, in the long term. It's in longer term rather long -term. than short term, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, I think we would want to really seriously discuss the implication because if I if I've ever made one edit then I'm safe forever but if I haven't yet made an edit then I'm up in a month a week a year a decade some number yeah, of course I would actually limit to only blocked users for example okay. but of course that's all, you know susceptible to discussion yes yeah sure that was just a funny mm -hmm. no no that yeah, it works uh, any other Steve. Oh, no, I just looked up as the name of exist. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They probably can't spell in American in, in British English and wrote it accidentally they in America. Spell JD oh, well, that could be the case as well. Uh, anybody? Riveting discussion, isn't it? Sorry. Um, yeah, so we're actually running out of time, astonishingly, despite the fact that I've stood here and blithered all the time. Oh, wait, that would be why we've run out of time. Um, so we've got about five minutes left if there's any kind of last minute discussion or comments from anyone? In that case, uh, I guess what we should do is say thank you. And um, I really hugely value people's um, input on the roadmap. Um, uh, edit it directly, post on the talk page, send me an email saying you're a complete idiot and you don't know what you're doing, whatever you like to do. I Feel free to be polite, but I know, asking a lot. James. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it's somewhat on the side, uh, and most of the people who care have already heard this. Um, but for on the check user side, if you use it, if you're interested in it, and have strong opinions on what it means, what it's missing, etc. Um, as Chris said, one of the reasons global check users is going slowly is because we're, we're doing a, a, a long look at that. And uh, some check users have already talked to some outside contractors that we that we've hired. And, um, and on the legal and LCA side, we're we're taking a deep dive into it to see. What if anything we can and want to change? Recursive um, check users. So let let me know. I can give you my card. You can give me feedback now. Whatever. Um, as just as we're just throwing out ideas so that we can incorporate that as we're thinking. Um, obviously, we'll probably start looking at other things later. But right now, it's specific to check user. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of really horrible questions out there that we've dodged by not mentioning them, so I'm about to curse us in the last minute or so of this. Um, so for example, there's a suggestion that we should 
get rid of the concept of IP users and instead have auto create an account. This avoids publishing people's protected personal information online for them all to see, even with a warning. But on the other hand, it means that the concept of the IP block log now goes from something everyone on earth can see to being only visible to check users, which is a very major change in how wikis work. That's a really big change. It doesn't mean we can't do it, but it means that that's a really proper discussion, not just a, yeah, it feels like the right thing to do, flick a switch. Um, similarly, uh, attribution um, and how you do attribution between different wikis when you reuse images and so on and so forth. Um, with single user finalization, it becomes a lot easier to actually properly credit the, the user. And things that hook different wikis together make it better, easier. If your image was used on this article, things like that. But it also means that um, we're likely to get kind of cross wiki um, complaints about image use, um, asks, uh, requests for deletion, requests for uh, revert wars on Turkish wiki um, from people who don't speak Turkish or English or French, you know, whatever we end up with um, can be very messy. So, hey, something to look forward to. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.